Psalm 8. For the director of music, according to Gittith, a psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the lips of children and infant, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work <clears throat> of your fingers, the moon and stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler of the works of your hands. You placed everything under his feet, all flocks and herds, the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, all honor and blessing and power do indeed belong to you, for you are the Lord, our God, and your name is majestic in all the earth. Speak to us now, we pray, Lord God. Draw our hearts towards you. Renew our minds by the power of your spirit that we might know you better and worship you fuller in our lives. Amen. Amen. Please do um, be seated. So uh, it's become our practice in um, August for the children and young people to stay um, with us and to have um, shorter um, Bible um, talks. Um, if you haven't already got them, children and young people, on the way in, there are some handouts and clipboards and um, some things in order to help you um, concentrate on what God is saying um, to you from this psalm, Psalm um, 8. Uh, to begin with, I want to give you um, some important, an important lesson in conversation. Okay, it's really going to help you in your life. Uh, it's going to help you get through um, life um, really, really well. It will help husbands and wives relate to each other better. Uh, parents and children relate to each other well. And friends uh, and family. And it's this. Pay really careful attention to bookend conversations. Bookend conversations. If your wife or your husband says something to you over breakfast and they choose, choose to repeat that exact same conversation in bed last thing at night, it's very important to them. It's a major um, issue. Or children, if you're on your way to school and let's say your mum or dad says to you, do not forget to post granddad's birthday card on your way to school. And as soon as you arrive back and you step through the porch, they say to you, did you post granddad's birthday card on your way to school? Okay, that's an important thing that they wanted you to do. We know it's important because they've bookended it. You got it at breakfast, you got it at the evening meal, or you got it at breakfast and you got it at bed time. And here the psalmist in Psalm 8, he has a bookend conversation with the people. You noticed that, didn't you? And it was wonderfully brought out in the prayers and by Annette. Look at it. It's in verse 1 and 9. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. So he gives them it at breakfast, verse 1, and then they get it for their evening meal, verse 9. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And it's a call to adoration. We know what it is, don't we? To adore something. You just want to pour praise on it. Uh, you love it so much, you can't help but your heart overpour into your words when you adore something. And this is a call to adoration, to adore the Lord God who created everything. So in that phrase, there's an exclamation of wonder. So in your little circle, um, children and young people, just put a little exclamation uh, mark. There's an exclamation um, of wonder. The psalmist just says, I just can't help it. It's like the Lord takes my breath away. I can't take it in how great he is. His, his name is too wonderful um, for me. What a name, God, you've made um, for yourself. It's like, if we were to paraphrase it and get into one word, the psalm would begin with, wow, and it would end with, wow. 
So just take a moment just to talk to the person next to you and just say, describe a wow moment that you had. That's all. Just describe a wow moment um, that you have, a time when something took your breath away. Just, have a, just mention it to the person um, next to you. Okay, great. Let's just, let's just have a few just to get us thinking. Those who would like to, who are happy to, just put your hand up and tell me to share a wow moment. Just put your hand up. Come on, husbands, or otherwise you're going to be in big trouble. Okay, Richard. When my wife walked into the church. When my wife walked into the church and walked down the aisle. A wow moment. Yes, Richard. Okay. Well, well done. Okay, other wow moments that we've, that we've had. Put your head over, a wow moment. Yes, Jan. Yes, scenery. Some climbing to the top of the mountain and then just looking out at God's creation. Wow. Anything else? Yes. Driving over the Humber Bridge. Driving, well, yeah. Driving over the Humber Bridge. I mean, it is a real, it, sometimes it's some feats of um, human accomplishment, isn't it? Gav. Seeing 50 barrel swans at the River Lake S. 50 swans at the Lake S. Beautiful. So something in nature, some, you know, a, 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 real, a flock of swans. It's just great, isn't it? Or maybe the first time you hear a particular piece of music. Now, I just want to say that Psalm 8 um, is the psalmist saying, he looks at God and it's just, wow. Wow, God. Oh, Lord, our God, how majestic is your name um, in all the earth. I know wow is not very good at it because it doesn't convey much about content. But what it does get across, wow, is the whole idea of how we feel. And the psalmist is really feeling this as he thinks about God. The Lord is majestic. His name is over all the earth. But in that phrase, there's also a declaration of greatness. Um, so if you want to draw in your little circle, um, just a, a, a megaphone, a declaration of greatness. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Majestic, it's a word that's usually reserved, isn't it, for royalty, um, for kings or Queens, and here we get it for the King of Kings, um, for God um, Himself. But the Lord doesn't just rule a little part, a small area um, of the of the world, does it? Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is Your name in all the earth! Now, King Charles at his coronation, um, he had these various um, titles that, that were given to him and styles and titles. Let us humbly beseech Almighty God to bless the long life, health, and honor of all worldly happiness, the most high, the most uh, mighty, and most mer excellent monarch, our sovereign Lord Charles III, now by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of other realms and territories, head of the Commonwealth, defender of the faith, and the sovereign of the most noble order of the Garter. And there you go, we've got the Union Jack uh, representing um, his um, reign over these um, um, countries. Now imagine if you had to, get a flag for God <laughs> by combining some flags, okay? That'd be quite a feat, wouldn't it? Because God is not the king over some little small territory. He's not just the king over Israel. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name over all um, the earth. It's a declaration of greatness because he rules every kingdom, every territory, and has every um, title. But also in that phrase... There's an invitation to worship. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Just right in that third circle, just draw a little envelope. It's an invitation to worship. We're invited to praise um, God. I wonder what the best invitation you've received. I wonder what the best invitation you've ever received um, in your life. But here we're told the most appropriate response to God, who is King of Kings over all the earth, is to praise him is to worship him, is to extol him with the words of our mouth. Even, as Richard said, when the music stops and the electricity um, fades, we continue um, to praise um, him. The invitation of this psalm is to make that our yours. Do you get that? Oh, Lord, our Lord. And he says, look, you make that our yours. <laughs> So that is your Lord, so that you can declare with God's people, you can join in the worship and say, yes, our Lord. The mood of the psalm is one of awe 
and wonder and praise. So Psalm 8, it calls us to worship and adoration of the Lord our God, King over all the earth. What are we to adore him for? Well, I would say, and I'd like to give you two reasons from the psalm that we should join in the worship um, with all um, creation and with the people of God worshiping. Two reasons um, from these verses. Uh, one, God is worthy of adoration because he uses weakness to silence the strong. And secondly, God is worthy of adoration because he uses humans to rule the earth. So that first one, number one reason, the Lord is worthy of adoration because he uses weakness to silence um, the strong. And the psalmist um, is amazed because although the Lord is the one who is, what has he done? He set his glory above the heavens and yet he uses the weak things of the world to show his glory against his enemies. Isn't that amazing? He uses the speech of children and to silence his enemies. We love that kind of thing, don't we? We love it when weakness is used in order to shame the strong. I think that was some of the success of, do you remember Gareth Malone? Who, who watched that? Um, the BBC's The Choir. It was quite interesting, wasn't it? In each series, he would visit an, an unmusical community. He'd basically then twist their arms into forming um, a choir. In the first series in 2006, it was a mixed secondary school in Middlesex and they'd never had a choir before, and musically nobody thought anything of them. And they went on to perform at the World Choir Games in China. His choir in the second series performed at the um, Albert Hall. You see, he took in this series always what was apparently weak and insignificant, and then he used it to shame the kind of naysayers and those who would mock um, the whole idea that anything could be done um, with this particular group of people. And he did so with such great effect that obviously he was honoured uh, in the Queen Honours list. And it's also probably why the Telegraph described Gareth Malone as an inspirational man, worthy of respect and praise from the people of Great Britain. Okay, why? Because he took the weak things, apparently, and used them in order to shame um, the strong. And look what the Lord has done. Can you see it here? It set out really um, straightforward in the you have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you've established a stronghold against your enemies to silence. So the praise of the children and infants silences the foe and the avenger. He takes the weak things to shame the strong. Now, this is really interesting because God could have done Psalm 2. What could he have done? He could have smashed his enemies to pieces like pottery, Psalm 2. Or he could, Psalm 3, have smashed them on the jaw and broken all their teeth. That's what Psalm 2 and Psalm 3 says. But you get to Psalm 8, and what does God do? He baffles his enemies through babbling babes. God can take what's seen as weak and foolish in order to shame the strong. He uses smallness, weakness, and insignificance um, to bring down his enemies and to bring praise and glory um, to him. And so, uh, when Jesus, and Richard made reference to this, when Jesus um, came into the world, what was the mark of his majesty? Uh, the Son of Man, what was the mark of his uh, majesty? He rode into Jerusalem, not on a great war horse, uh, but on this um, donkey in humility. God's strength magnified in human weakness. God's victory achieved through childlike lowliness. God's rule of the world established through a humble servant who would die, <laughs> weakness and insignificance upon a cross and yet bring glory to God. So that when Jesus is riding in and the children are praising him, the children and the religious leaders say, you need to stop this. And what does Jesus do? He quotes Psalm 8 in Matthew 21. He says, from the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. God is worthy of praise because he uses weakness to silence his enemies. But number two, the Lord is worthy of adoration because he uses humans to rule um, the earth, verses three um, to eight. The psalmist is absolutely amazed at the position and that humans occupy. He's amazed by it. 
he's lost in wonder and praise and adoration. Because when he considers everything God has made, it's mind-blowing to him that mankind should even factor into his thinking. Do you get that? God has made all this. Everything belongs to him. And the psalmist is just thinking, wow, God, why do you, why do you even pay any attention to us? Right, here's a picture of some stars. Um, those who've got a clipboard, write it down. If you do nothing else with a clipboard, you'll do this because I've got some prizes. I've got the whole universe in a bag. And the person who gets the closest will win. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds to write down how many stars you think you are, there are on that picture, okay? Ad adults, help me count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop. Okay, stand up, children, young people, if you thought there was more than 100. If your number is more than 100, stand up. If it's more than 100. Okay, adults, you've just got to, uh, just children. <laughs> okay, so have a look, because I want to make sure there's no cheating. So have the number checked by Bill, more than 100. Stay standing up if you thought it was more than 150. Okay, stay standing up if you thought it was more than 170. Okay, right, let's get some numbers then. What's your number? 500, what's your number? A billion, that's definitely more. What's your number? 100,000, that's definitely more, but I think you three will have to sit down and we'll have to go back to the other people because you went really big. Anybody get close to 173? Anybody, 170? What did you get, Jesse? I can't, you have to shout. 75, anyone higher than 75? What's yours? 130, anyone closer than 130? Chevin. 100, 112, okay, so we're with you at the moment. Anyone more than 130? Yeah. 100 and? 131, anyone closer than 131? Okay, Michael, what's your number? <laughs> right, okay. Right, I'm going to go over here at 130, what was it, 130, okay. Have you got 131 written down? Show it to, show it to an adult, because we're just going up in ones, I think, right? Is it right? In the star? It's, oh, I think we'll go over here. Where is it written? <laughs> All right. Okay, come on then, here's your universe. You've got the Milky Way, the galaxy, the planet Mars, and um, Star Mix. Well done. There you go. Congratulations. Okay, you have to write it in that, in that star. Okay, so the naked eye, apparently, you can see perhaps on a clear night 4,000 stars. The Milky Way contains 150 and to, um, to 200 billion um, stars, so I think that's what some of the guys were counting. Um, in our own galaxy, apparently there are, um, we, we're only one galaxy among 150 billion others, each which have 10 um, billions of stars. There's a galaxy known as Virgo with more than five trillion stars. I mean, who counts these? This is, I mean, this is wild, isn't it? Wild stuff. <laughs> wild stuff. But when you just think about that, whatever the numbers are, there's obviously plenty out there. We're, we're crumbs in the cosmos, aren't we? We're specks in the solar system. We're grit in the galaxy. You think about that, crumbs, specks, grit. And then the psalmist says that the Lord is mindful of us. We factor like hugely in the Lord's thoughts. Well, that's a wow, isn't it? You see, what makes us significant? We're not significant because we somehow climb some evolutionary um, ladder and become supercharged um, chimps. We didn't climb anywhere, this psalm says. We were placed somewhere. We've not climbed to this height. God placed us by his sovereign creator's hand at that height. Look at verse 5. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. God makes us significant. We have an exalted position. We're crowned with glory and honor because God chose to do it. And this speaks into what we call 
the whole realm of identity um, and dignity. How does culture judge our uh, dignity, our worth, our identity? Well, usually through the job that you do or the grades that you get, which lots of people have got this week, or how much money you have or how you look or how many um, friends you have. So culture says, look, to have an identity, to have worth, to have dignity, you've got to earn it, you've got to uh, achieve it, you've got to work for it. That's a terrible way to live. <laughs> and Psalm 8 pulls up that poisonous plant by its roots and says, no, you have dignity and you have worth because the creator of all things, he has set his attention upon you. He created you in his image and that gives you dignity and worth. It isn't about a place you've achieved, but it's what God has done in placing humanity in a privileged position. And how does that help us? Let me say at least two things the way that this psalm would help us. It stops us being overinflated about ourselves. If you're ever getting overinflated thinking, look what I've achieved, look what I've done, look where I've arrived, look what house I've got, look what job I've got, whatever it might be, and the psalmist says, you have nothing that God hasn't given you. And your greatest position was given to you by God. You're created in his image. And secondly, it stops us from being deflated. Because we don't need to be deflated saying, well, look how everybody else is advancing. Look what everybody else has got. What am I? What am I? Well, how does the psalmist answer? You are one of God's creation. One of God's creatures. And he's mindful of you. The Lord has set his attention on you. No matter if no one else does, if you don't have the friends that you have, you didn't get the job that you wanted, you didn't get the grades that you want, whatever it is, you can't be overinflated or deflated because none of that touches the fact that you have been created by God in his image. And he loves you, he cares for you, and he has given you worth and dignity. So let us finish, and with a really loud voice, all of us together, as loud as we can, We'll say this twice um, together. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Praise God. Thank you.